Today's video is brought to you by Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game. You can choose a real country to lead during a World War III scenario where you can fight up to 128 other players in real-time games that can take weeks to complete. You can use many different unit types to build your force such as tanks, jets, nuclear submarines, and either declare war on your neighbors or forge alliances with other players. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. Additionally, you can play on the same account using either a PC or mobile. And for my viewers, you get an exclusive gift. Click the link below to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is available for 30 days, so don't lose time. Try Conflict of Nations today. And now, let's take a look at how the Super Hornet replaced the Legacy Hornet, along with the F-14 Tomcat, and why the Navy needs to keep flying its most versatile jet. The F-18 Super Hornet is a multi-role twin-engine supersonic carrier-capable fighter and attack aircraft. With the capability to essentially employ all strike and air-to-air -air weapons in the Navy's inventory, the Super Hornet is truly a workhorse. Notable features include twin tails, folding wings, a tail section that has vertical stabilizers forward of the elevators, a unique extended wing design known as Leading Edge Extensions or LEX, reinforced landing gear for carrier operations, and wingtip missile racks. An evolution of the original or Legacy Hornet, the Super Hornet is easily differentiated from its predecessor via rectangular intake ramps, a larger sawtooth wing, and is about 20% larger than the Legacy Hornet. With its larger wing, more powerful engines, and extended combat radius as compared to the Legacy F-18, today's Super Hornets are used as fleet defenders, air superiority fighters, long-range strike aircraft with precision-guided weapons, fighter escort, suppression of enemy air defenses, close air support, maritime strike, reconnaissance, forward air control, and even tanker missions. Essentially, the Super Hornet is capable of performing every mission type in the tactical spectrum, making it the embodiment of a multi-role fighter. To understand this jet better, let's take a quick look at some key specifications of the Super Hornet. Length, 60 feet, one and a quarter inches. Height, 16 feet. Wingspan, 44 feet, 8.5 inches. Maximum speed, Mach 1.8. Empty weight, 32,081 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 66,000 pounds. Power plant, two General Electric F414 GE400 turbofans, each producing 13,000 pounds of thrust dry or 22,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. Thrust to weight ratio, 0.93 or 1.1 with loaded weight and 50% internal fuel. Armament Just like the Legacy Hornet, the Super Hornet has an incredible array of weapons it can carry. And while the Super Hornet retains the internal 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon, it also adds two additional hardpoints bringing the total up to 11. Some weapon options for these hardpoints include for air-to-air -air missions, the AIM-9 Sidewinder including the AIM-9X and the AIM-120 AMRAAM. For anti-ship operations, the Harpoon and Slam ER. For air-to-ground missions, the Maverick, Joint Standoff Weapon, Paveway Laser Guided Bombs, and Conventional Freefall Bombs. For suppression of enemy air defenses or SEED, the AGM-88 Harm Missile. And in the case of the Growler, external jamming pods. This list is by no means exclusive and should serve to demonstrate that if there is an airborne munition in the inventory, the Super Hornet can probably carry it. Sensors. Just like the latest version of the F-16, the Super Hornet carries the AN-APG-79 radar system, which is smaller and lighter than previous radars. Moreover, this system provides an enhanced view of the battlefield and allows for the detection, identification, and tracking of multiple targets at range. A variant of the Super Hornet, the Growler specializes in electronic warfare and contains even more sensors and sensor pods. In fact, the internal 20mm cannon is removed to make room for advanced jamming equipment and sensors. Growlers provide escort jamming to confuse enemy air defenses, as well as standoff jamming and deception rolls. Since the Growler has 90% commonality with the Super Hornet, it can accompany other F-18s in all phases of an attack mission. Development When the Navy ordered the original Hornet, it was intended to replace older strike aircraft and serve as a complement to the larger and longer-ranged F-14 Tomcat. And while the Hornet was good at performing many roles and much easier to maintain, its smaller size limited the Hornet's combat radius. Following the end of the Cold War, the Navy began plans to modernize or replace the F-14, which by then was starting to show its age. 
When the cost of upgrading the F-14 proved to be too expensive, the Navy began seeking a replacement. Initially, as part of the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter or NATF program, a navalized F-22 was considered. And while the F-22 is an incredible aircraft, adapting it for carrier operations would have increased its weight by about 30%. Additionally, in order to adjust to demanding carrier operations, variable wings would likely have been needed to adjust the F-22's flight profile. This doesn't even get into the potential loss of stealth characteristics or huge costs that would have been involved. For these reasons, the navalized F-22 concept was soon scrapped. At the same time the Navy was looking to replace the F-14, it was also seeking to replace the A-6 Intruder, which was an old airframe by the 1990s. McDonnell Douglas had proposed the A-12 Avenger II, but their program was cancelled after cost overruns, delays, and doubt whether the program could meet its stated objectives. This left the Navy searching for both a long-range fighter and attack platform. Enter McDonnell Douglas. As far back as the 1980s, an enlarged Hornet concept was being proposed which was known then as Hornet 2000. Determining it was safer to upgrade a relatively new design instead of creating something from scratch, the Navy decided to move forward. And while an enlargement of an existing airframe may seem like a minor modification, the enlarged and upgraded Hornet essentially became a new aircraft. However, in order to gain budget approval, the Navy kept the F-A-18 designation to convince Congress that this program was a low-risk derivative of the Hornet. After much testing and trials, the Super Hornet was approved as a replacement for both the F-14 and A-6 in February of 2000. Replacing two legendary aircraft and essentially condensing the fleet to an all-Hornet composition left the Super Hornet with very big shoes to fill. More on that later. Aside from being a larger aircraft, the Super Hornet improved on the original design in several ways. For example, due to its larger wings, the Super Hornet has two extra hardpoints, raising the total to 11 from the Legacy Hornet's 9. And even though it's a larger aircraft, the Super Hornet has over 40% fewer structural parts than the Hornet. Furthermore, the GE F-414 engines have 35% more thrust than the original Hornet's F-404 engines. The Super Hornet also has enlarged leading edge extensions or LEX, which allow it to perform at high alpha or high angles of attack. The larger Super Hornet is also about 7,000 pounds heavier in the empty weight configuration and carries over 30% more internal fuel. This increases the range by over 50% as compared to the Legacy Hornet. Additionally, the Super Hornet can return to a carrier with more fuel and munitions still on board, an ability known as Bring Back. The Super Hornet's Bring Back capacity is over 9,000 pounds. And lastly, the Super Hornet's designed to be equipped with a buddy store or aerial refueling system to refuel other aircraft. When it was all said and done, the Navy considered the Super Hornet's acquisition a success, having met schedule and cost requirements. Today, the Super Hornet is produced by Boeing, with Northrop Grumman being the main subcontractor. Northrop Grumman produces a fuselage and vertical tail sections, and then assembles all associated subsystems at its facility in El Segundo, California. Upgrades While the Super Hornet is a capable and advanced platform, the introduction of fifth-generation aircraft and technologies have shown the need for upgrades. The latest version of the Super Hornet, the Block 3 or Advanced Super Hornet, addresses these concerns. Upgrades include a 50% reduction in Frontal Radar Cross-Section or RCS, as well as the ability to equip enclosed weapon pods to further reduce detection. This will help complement the stealthy F-35. An increased operational lifespan of at least 9,000 hours, this is up from 6,000 hours. This will extend the Super Hornet's life by years and possibly decades and is an enhancement that cannot be understated. Today's Super Hornets are asked to do more with less aircraft, and longer service life ensures that the Navy has the aircraft it needs at the ready. When it comes to avionics, improvements such as a 17 times more powerful upgraded computer system, improved data link sharing, and the addition of enlarged touchscreens in the cockpit, which give the pilot the ability to better manage information systems. These sensor upgrades allow the backseater in the F model Super Hornet to control up to four to six drones of varying sizes. Attributable drones commanded in this way can be used to perform missions ahead of the Super Hornet while not endangering the human crew. Legacy The Super Hornet has been defending the Navy fleet and projecting power since its introduction into service in 2000. And with planned upgrades, it will continue to serve for decades to come. Having evolved from the Hornet, which itself evolved from the YF-17 Cobra, the Super Hornet has earned a deserved reputation as one of the most storied and versatile aircraft in aviation. And while the F-35 B and C variants are being adopted by the Marines and Navy respectively, 
The Super Hornet is a versatile, durable, and combat-proven asset that should be found on U.S. carrier decks into the foreseeable future. Over 50 years ago in 1965, the Northrop designers who began working on Project P530 as a rework of the F5E could not have known the long trail the design would blaze in the skies. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, click subscribe and then mash that like button so you don't miss a single video. Thank you to my patrons and channel members who directly support this channel. If you'd like to contribute to making content you enjoy, I'll leave links in the description below. Now you know! Thanks again to today's sponsor, Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game with a modern global warfare setting. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. Using the link in the description below, you'll get an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is available for only 30 days, so don't lose time. Click the link, choose your country, and fight your way to victory.